Cora TV. The world is thinking. I wonder if you both might comment on this. At a, in an age when there is so much, as Mr. Hitchens would put it, wonderful secular knowledge that should disprove or replace the value or the importance of religion, all the modern knowledge that we have, why is it that in so much of the world religion is growing rapidly, in the global south particularly, evangelical Christianity is growing at a tremendous rate, and there are plenty of statistics to back that up. And even when people experience the most horrendous evil, they seem to turn in some strong ways towards religious belief. My brother-in-law is a U.S. Air Force chaplain. He served two tours in Iraq. He's presently in Afghanistan. He ministers to men and women who have seen horrendous evil and experienced it firsthand. And yet his services are overflowing. He's done many baptisms. Please help us understand a time when the human race should have grown out of all of this. Why is it growing so dramatically? Thank you. Do you want first go of that? I, I'm happy to yield to them. Well, at the risk of being callous, can I, be, I seem to have gone <laughs> inaudible. Yeah. No, um, I don't think that we should be paying for chaplains. I don't think the US government should be employing any. <laughs> James, James Madison, co-author of the Virginia Statute on Religious Freedom and of the First Amendment, therefore, was very adamant on the point, very clear. Uh, there shouldn't be, the, we have, it's flat out on unconstitutional to pay uh, or employ a chaplain to open the proceedings of Congress or to be in the armed forces. We can't have chaplains on our payroll, that's that. People who want to pray can't be stopped, but they can do it. Of all the solitary activities, apart from the search for, oh, never mind. Um, uh, surely that's one that doesn't need a, a paid state mediator. It's a negation of the American Revolution. So that first. Second, yes, the mo modernity, involving, as it does, a huge exchange of uh, technology and uh, population and innovation in a very churning and vertiginous manner, of course means that a lot of lives have to be lived in a very insecure and risky way. And it's not at all uh, un unlike our nature as a species to try and cling to stability, certainty, and consolation in those cases. It, it explains itself, it seems to me. Um, what is notable, though, is it hasn't come up in thousands of years with any superior explanation to the old ones. It still is going back to myths that were discredited and exploded many years ago. And these, of course, turn out to be false consolations, whereas the consolations of philosophy and of the aesthetic and of the beauty of science and of reason and so on, available to us all the time and really able to explain why things happen, why terrible wounds are inflicted in Afghanistan and so forth. No, no, that won't do. Let's, uh, like some absolute loser, find the, 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 the person who paley means, who says, finds a watch on the beach and thinks, I don't know what this is for, but it seems to tick, it must be for something, but doesn't understand it. We find this wonderful truffle and open it and look at the chocolate and throw it away and then munch on the wrapper. <laughs> I don't understand it, but I'm one of those who are not made this way. I think the core of your question, uh, I think that the more mankind learns, the more mankind understands that it does not have all the answers. And that's why people continue to reach and seek answers that is beyond what even in this age, we've been able to discover. I think that is why. And I think that there's also the innate emptiness in mankind to always go back to the core of what made mankind in the first place. And that, to me, is a supreme being. I think that answers the question of why I think the envelop... Sorry. I thought you got Just the Holy thing. Ghost or Throwing something while around. I was up. <laughs> But uh, I think that's I why you see the rise of evangelism. That's when it's a shout and holler moment. Whether or not I agree with the rise or not is another uh, question. But I think the quest is inspired because of, because of the increased knowledge has not answered the question of where it begins and what governs all of the things that obviously 
operate in some order and with some precision. And I must say, at the risk of my sounding callous, it amazes me that it doesn't bother you that we spend $2 trillion in a war we should have never been in. You just worry about paying the chaplains to pray <laughs> over it. Yeah, well, you see, I don't love our enemies, and I don't love people who do love them. I hate our enemies, and I think they should be killed. Uh, and I think that uh, they want to kill me. And I think we could do it probably with half the budget, or maybe twice, but I'm absolutely sure that there should be no country that, that has a budget that could threaten ours. And I'm not sentimental about the point. I wanted to have another whack at that very so question the now. So people that preach God and love should shut up and remain no, private, people, no, but people, killers ought to just go and the people who just preach, kill people no, that they call the people their who enemies. Preach, the people That's who preach, very uh, ethical and, and... The people who <laughs> preach Allahu Akbar, the people who preach Allahu Akbar have better find out that there's a stronger force than them and one that also has unalterable convictions and principles, and that can also be offended, and that they're offended at their peril, that's what I think. Now, to, this, to the last question, I just want to have one more run at it. You already answered. I know, but if you don't mind. <laughs> you tried this is something, twice. When I started hurling myself around like a okay. shout and holler person. I understand. That was well, I there's no right or wrong thing. with you, so go okay. ahead. <laughs> Answer three times. The questions that they come and ask these chaplains are, why, why, why? Why does it happen that a, a, the nicest guy in my unit just took a round through the throat, you know? That I've just been in this village where the ch all the children have been killed and where... You, you can feel it in this for yourself. Why, 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 why? That's what the question, isn't it? Well, do you, have you ever heard any spokesman of any religion give an answer to that question? They've had thousands of years to think about it. No, they haven't come up with a question at all. Unless to say, as they used to when it was a plague or a war or a tsunami, well, it's probably a sign of sin. You've been punished. The Archbishop of Canterbury in England two years ago says he really worries how God could be so mean as to unleash a tidal wave towards Christmas time in Asia. You can't believe you're listening to this stuff. <laughs> Now, if you ask me, okay, I'll say, why did this happen? Why did the best guy I know get cancer of the throat or get mugged or, or slaughtered or whatever it was? I say, because we belong to an imperfectly evolved species where the adrenaline glands are too big, the prefrontal lobes are too small, and we bear every sign of the stamp of our lowly origin. And we, only by dis realizing the fact that we are mammals are we likely to be able to talk any sense about it. And if you say, well, why did that city fall down or be overcome by waves or that volcano kill all those children? I say, well, hate to break it to you, but we live on a cooling planet whose crust hasn't quite settled yet, and these are to be expected. And there is no other explanation for them, and don't believe anyone who says there is. Well, this is not perhaps perfect ethical instruction, but it, it does conform to the Hippocratic injunction the primo non nocere, at least I'm not lying to these people. At least what I say can do them no harm, and at least it cannot increase the illusions they already have. And usually when you go to that village and ask why are the children being killed, it's because someone who believed in God thought that they had it coming. 